My assumption is that you are. So now I can just speed up the process. If I was to give you a title, I, I would probably title this uh, The Long Journey Back. The Long Journey Back, if you want a title. Now, in the 42nd chapter, we find ourselves uh, we find ourselves involved in a situation whereby Egypt uh, is prospering, but all the world around them is suffering. Egypt is prospering, but all the world around them is suffering. Uh, Y'all, I, I can stop right there. Really, too. Do you feel like everybody else is blessed, but you're the only one that's struggling? That everybody's blessed, but you're struggling. But Egypt is blessed. And the reason why Egypt is blessed, and I know Egypt is synonymous with the world, but do you know that Christian people can influence the world rather than the world influencing Christian people? Here's what I mean. Let me give you a little background. Uh, this, this young man by the name of Joseph, who's now 30 years old. So don't tell me you can't uh, worship and serve Christ at, at a young age. You can do it. Uh, uh, but not going to cost you something. Hmm. Now, now Joseph uh, was sold into slavery by his brothers, okay, by his brothers, uh, Reuben and Simeon, Levi and Dan and Zeppelin, uh, 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 Zeppelin, Zeppelin and all those brothers. They sold him into slavery because it was haters of his brothers. Y'all got, got any family members that just hate us? No. So they, yeah, she said, yeah. So they sold him into slavery. And, and, and God allowed it. Uh, Y'all hear? God will allow you to suffer for a greater cause. My God. Uh, Y'all hear me? God will allow you to go through stuff, but uh, uh, your present situation has nothing to do with your future. So God will allow you to go through some stuff and stop whining when God allowed you to go through some stuff, okay? When your leg hurt and your head hurt and your back hurt and all that stuff and you don't have no money in your pocket, stop, stop whining. Perhaps God is setting you up for something. That's right. So 17 years old, Joseph's brother sells him into slavery and he ends up uh, in Egypt. And but when God is with you, it doesn't make a difference where you end up. It's, it's, uh, 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 God will bless you wherever you are if God is with you. So he ends up in Egypt, and, and at the age of 17, God blessed him. And the, the Bible said God found favor in him, and he got a good paying job in the house of Pharaoh. Uh, uh, Y'all praying for me, right, Vincent? In the house of Pharaoh. He got a good government job in the house of Pharaoh, and when God blesses you, uh, 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 it seems as if you just keep getting elevated to the, to the highest level and to the next level. And so finally, Joseph got to a place where, where Pharaoh trusted him so much that Pharaoh said, I'm going to put everything in your, in, in, in your care because you are a man of integrity. But don't fool yourself. Whenever God bless you, you know you got to have a test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here is the test for most of us men. God bless you. If that's your struggle, the test was Potiphar's wife, the woman. And he's a young man. And I don't know about you. I know he had natural uh, 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 tendencies, if you know what I mean. He was a young man, and, and Potiphar's wife, in the name of, came in and approached, Joseph, approached him and said to Joseph, he said, Joseph, uh, 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 you know, I, I've been looking at you, and you're a fine thing. You're a fine thing. And, 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 and I would like to lie with you. Uh, sleep with you, have sex with you, get busy with you. Y'all, y'all, y'all praying with me? Uh, uh, that's that, that, that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. She said, and I know that you know it's we we not you know sometimes it's the man approaching the woman, but every now and then the woman will come after you. And if you're not strong enough, you're gonna fall or succumb, and you will mess your future up for a present time of joy. My Lord, your future. You will mess up 30 years for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Uh, Y'all praying with me? Yeah, yeah ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, pray with me. Uh, so anyway, so Joseph refused her, her proposal. Her, her, you know, he refused her. And, and then some people, uh, once you refuse them, they're persistent. So she was persistent. In the fact that she had to have Joseph. 
But Job was saying, no. And so finally she, set, she sets him up and he's accused of, 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 of trying to, uh, uh, what I want to say, force himself upon her. And, and she lied to a point where Joseph got locked up. Hey, it, it ain't nothing new. Folks still getting set up. <laughs> oh yeah, this not new. This old stuff here, uh, Marsh, it, this, 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 this some Genesis stuff. This stuff in the beginning. So he ended up getting locked up. Y'all hear me? And see, sometimes before you go upward, God will knock you way down. So he get locked up and fast forward. When he get locked up, God still had favor on him. I, I, I wish I could preach with you. I got locked up one time, uh, too many. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, I was in jail. And, and God is true. I'm, I'm, Y'all praying me right. We're going somewhere. The long journey. We got to get back. See, we lost our way. Now we got to get back. Uh, uh, so I got locked up, and, and when I went to the courthouse, at the time, because I had to go to the courthouse, I had on this orange suit, and I had some jewelry, and it wasn't this kind. Uh, and, 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 uh, and they locked my hand behind my back, and, and, and that's why folks don't know, you know, y'all, they be messing with these preachers like we was always saying. We wouldn't always say it. Uh, uh, so they took me to court, and when I came back, they put me in this cell, and the cell started closing in on me. And I don't know about you, you with your bad self. Thank you, bad until they turn that key and lock that cell. And I guarantee you, the devil will challenge your mind. So I'm losing my mind in that jailhouse. And God stepped in immediately, allowed the prisoners to come and say, when they locked everybody down, they said, it's nothing but the favor of God. That's why this, this text relates to me. I can relate to it because it came and said when the, he wasn't in here when the trouble started. And they let me out and put me in a big room just, just enough for me to grab my mind back. Amen. So, so, and, and so, so they locked Joseph up. And he was in prison. And, 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 and the Bible says that he stayed there for a while. Uh, so long that the butler and the baker showed up uh, uh, because Pharaoh, when he got mad, if he didn't kill you, he locked you up. Uh, and so he locked the butler and the baker. Read the story. And Joseph told a dream. So fast forward it. Fast forward the story. He told a dream. And, and, the, and, the, and the dream happened like this. That the butler said that, that, that I had this dream. And, 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 that, and, and the text said that when he had the dream, he went to Joseph to interpret the dream. And when he interpreted the dream... Uh, the, the Joseph said that Pharaoh will find favor in you and restore you back to your position. But then, you know how some folk are, uh, Brother Ron, once you hear some good news, the next person going to come and tell Joseph a dream, and perhaps you'll have the same good news. But the baker, he said, the baker said that I was baking and I and I had some uh, some 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 uh, some uh, uh, birds that flew over my head and the stuff that I baked, the birds came down and plucked it off my head. I'm paraphrasing. You got to read the story for yourself or come to Bible study. Uh, <laughs> that's a plug. Uh, uh, so he said that when when the birds fell on top of his head. Joseph said that now what's going to happen with you in three days, you're not going to be restored to your position. Pharaoh's going to cut your head off in the text. And in three days, he cut his head off. The butler was back to his position. What the butler did, he sipped wine. You know what the king did? did they got wine tasters. Uh, uh, not the kind that's at the store, but they, they was, so that the king won't get poisoned. So basically, he put his life on the, on the line so that I'm going to drink this wine, that the wine is good, then king is okay for you to drink it. But if I die, king, you don't drink this wine. <laughs> right. Y'all still with me, right? So text said that I'm moving forward. Y'all say y'all familiar, but just in case, you didn't tell me the truth. Uh, uh, so he said, so he ended up, uh, the baker ended up getting his head cut off. And so, but Joseph said, now listen now, when you get restored back to your position, remember me. Oh, I'm learning so much in Genesis all over again. All do I know this story? The, the one thing that I'm learning in Genesis is that God favors who he wants to favor. Y'all right. yeah. hear me? And, right. and, and you're not going to be perfect. You'll never meet all of his expectations. But God favors who he wants to favor. And guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not apologizing for God's favor. Because I didn't apologize when I was had my frustrations. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody come and say, you know what, though? You always whine about your frustration. But no, if God's going to favor me, I'm going to accept his favor and walk in it. 
Y'all feel me, church? If God favors you, don't apologize for it. So finally, the butler didn't, didn't keep his word. So two years later, Joseph is still in jail. Two years later, let me just help somebody out here that's, that's been going through for a little while. Don't you whine and complain because your ship hasn't come in yet. Sometimes you got to spend some time in suffering before you come out that you might celebrate. And God's time is not like our time. What we want to do, we want to stay in suffering for two days. Mm -hmm. That's enough, God. I'm good. I got the lesson. But do you know most of us don't get the lesson after two days? Mm -hmm. It takes us a little while to go through something before we finally get the lesson. And the lesson is that sometimes God will leave you in there for two years. He left Joseph in there. And you know what's hard about that? He in there for a crime that he didn't commit. That's right. A lot of times we go through stuff and we never bother nobody. So stop whining about it. Because God got something for you. So here we go. So, so, so he says, he says now, he, 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 so now two years later, the king, the Pharaoh has a dream. And this is where you get into the text. Pharaoh has this dream and, and, and he, his, his magicians and his soothsayers can't interpret the dream. And, and I'm trying to help somebody here. When, when you have a special gift, your gift will make room for you. Stop whining. Because what God is going to do, he's going to allow you to be the best you that you can be. And can't nobody replace the original you. Amen. But the problem is, everybody's trying to be like somebody else. Why don't you just be the best you that you can be? And let God use you. So, so he, he gets up, he, he gets to a place where the, where the king has this dream. And now the king is troubled because... And folks always want to ask me, can you interpret dreams? No, I can't interpret dreams. I can't. No. And Joseph said, I can't interpret dreams anyway. Interpretations of dreams belong to God. If you have a dream that's scary, stop asking folk, and please don't go to those palm readers. <laughs> ask God. He'll interpret that dream for you. So Job said, interpretation of dreams belong to God. So, but he interprets the dream. Finally, he said, Pharaoh, here's the problem, what you have it. The problem is, Pharaoh, that you're about to have seven years of plenty, and then you're going to have seven years of, of, of a, 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 a famine that you've never seen before. It's going to be so hard on you that all of the blessings that you experience, it's like it's going to never happen. I wish y'all, I wish somebody really would be praying with me. You know, there's some time that you can go to so that you can have such a, a, a great, glorious time that when trouble comes behind it, it's like except the good time never never came. My God. So he said seven years. And because he interpreted the tech, the, the dream for Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, guess what? I'm gonna restore you back to your position. So although it was a long journey back to from the palace to the prison, back to the palace. Joseph is finally in his rightful position. Y'all, y'all hear me? Y'all, y'all hear me? So what it is, God will do for us. He'll make us have a full circle, so He might teach us a valuable lesson. But where you, where God starts you, God is gonna ultimately bring you back. Yeah, yeah, I wish, I wish, or I wish you could get it the way I feel it. Where, I, where God starts you is where, where now is where God's gonna get you back to. If you're a believer and you're going through trouble and you're going through trials, don't worry about that. God is gonna get you right back to where you're supposed to be if you are a believer in God. That's the key. If you're not a believer in God, you're gonna be stuck right on stupid. I know it's hard, but it's true. It's, I know it's hard. It's foolish not to believe in God. Well, it's foolish not to trust in God. Amen. In particular, what's going on in this world? Mm -hmm. You don't know what's jumping off. Mm, that's right. You don't know what's going to pop off. That's the language that the young people... You don't know what's going... And you don't have to bother anybody. As somebody said, Reverend Osher said, those people went to work Friday... Are hoping and praying that they'll come home. But they didn't come home Friday. They went to their own home. And I'm not trying to scare you. But, but listen. I'm quite sure all of the people that was in that building wasn't heathens. Perhaps one or two of them could have been believers. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know that Friday morning would be their last morning. That they would spend with their family. You and I don't know that. 
That's why I trust in God. Mm -hmm. Just in case something happened, on my way to work, on my way to church, just in case somebody act a fool, just in case somebody pull out a pistol, just in case somebody run me over, guess what? I'm good because I'm secure in the fact that I know that I'm a believer in God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Christians, don't whine. God got you. I'm telling you something good. So Joseph is restored into this great position, back to this great position. But now here, the story plot, the turn, it turns. Joseph has become not just in charge, but large mm. and in charge. I mean, you're talking about a baller. Joseph was a baller, and at 30. And you know some folk at 30, when they become a baller, they become foolish. Y'all hear me? I mean, they're just crazy. I mean, you know, they're going to all blinged out. And, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, they got 16 cars, and they ain't helping nobody. Y'all hear me? But Joseph, at least, if you're going to ball, do me a favor. At least help your family. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all. At least your family. So the word got out to Jacob, or, or the word got to well, the family was so bad in the land. Uh, uh, Jacob says in the text now, Jacob, who is Israel, uh, uh, who the daddy of the twelve boys, said, "Why are you staring here looking at me?" Oh, I, I'm gonna I'm interpret that uh, into today's. Uh, 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 Situation, right? Uh, uh, can I, can, yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all ready? I ain't talking nothing with nobody, but I'm going to say it. But I think I am. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. Uh, correct me. You just cook. I'm going to use you. You just cook. And you done did all this work, right? And you somebody comes in your house and they see the trash can full. Mm. It's full. I mean, trash about to run over. Now, you don't cook, you bought the food, you did all that stuff, and they ask you about food, but you see the trash running over, and, 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 and you know, you can say, well, what you looking at me? Don't you see the trash running over? Why don't you just take the trash out? Or, or, or maybe that don't work. If you walk up to your house and your grass is up to your knees. Amen. Am I preaching to anybody? Yes, sir. The grass is up to your knees, and you come to me and says to me, hey, daddy. Uh, uh, you got any money? Come on. No, I don't because yeah. I got to buy a lawnmower to cut the grass. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Am I preaching to anybody? I'm uh, preaching, Doc. You see what needs to be done, but you're asking me. Amen. Don't ask me, just do it. Mm-hmm. If you see the wall painted, don't ask me, Pastor, do you need to paint the wall? You know what we need to do. See a wet spot. Don't walk in the wet spot. Walk around the wet spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 but, but all of this, Jacob is saying to his boys. These boys should have known better. Amen. If you got a famine in the land, you don't have no food. <laughs> it ain't like you know how some people do. They open the cupboard. They ain't got no food the first time. Open the cupboard again. They still ain't got no food. Open the cupboard again. You still, and then you ask me, Mama, Daddy, what I'm gonna do? I don't know what you're gonna do, but I'm gonna buy me something to eat. Amen. You're almost 40 years old asking Daddy what he needs to do. I don't got to know what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's right in the text, right? That, in the text say that. I'm just interpreting a little bit, you know, in our day and age. And I know it's hard, in particular if you're lazy. Mm. This kind of preaching and teaching bothers lazy people. Now, if you're not lazy, this don't bother you because you're going to cut the bread. Oh, but they got some folks lazy. They look for a job hoping they don't find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know anybody like that? How about that? How about that? Oh, if you look for a job for once a month, you ain't looking for no job. Anyway, so look, the, the, famine, the famine was bad, and Jacob said, hey, listen, man, why are you look staring in my face? And, and I, I appreciate tough daddy with Father's Day coming up. In order to be a good daddy, sometimes you got to be a tough daddy. Well, Not foolish, but you got to be tough on him, right? 
So, man, look, man, go ahead on and over to Egypt. You know where the food is. It's, it's, it's happening in Egypt. Take the money and go buy the food. So they go over there to buy the food, and the story, the, 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 it works like this. When they get there, they meet this man, Joseph, who is their brother, but they don't know. Now, that's a tragedy. If you got a brother who is your brother, who spent 17 years with you, but you don't know your brother, you never knew him. Yeah, some people are living the same house. Unity, we are family. If y'all don't know us by now, when are you going to get to know each other? We don't spend 10 years together. They didn't they spend 17 years with their brother. But they don't know their brother. I don't care if my brother go a beard as long as Abraham or uh, Aaron's beard. I'm still gonna know that's my brother. Yeah. I'm gonna know my brother. And I understand Joseph has a different language now. He done, he done went over there and he done adopted not only the culture, but he adopted the language, but he knew his family. He didn't forget his family. So he says, so he gets over there in the text. The text says, I got five to seven minutes. The text says, he said, now, now when you get over there, buy food, right? Buy food. And so they got over there and they bought the food. So I'm going to speed the story up. But Joseph says, he's playing the game with them. Because remember, those ten boys sold him into slavery. And now, Joseph tells them about the dream that he had. He said, one of these days you will come down and bow down to me. And in that text, those boys bow down to him. But, but then they get what they came to get. Thank God for that. And they go back home. And just as it would happen, the food ran out. That's where we started chapter 43. The food ran out. And I don't care how much you think you got Sooner or later, it's going to run out. Mm -hmm. That's why we rely on God that he might continue to replenish what we had. You know, sooner or later, your strength runs out. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, your spirit fails. Sooner or later, your voice uh, uh, begins to tremble. Absolutely. Because you might be on top right now. But sooner or later, you're going to need God before he needs you. That's right. The food runs out in the text. And now they got to go back. But here's the problem. When they was there the first time, they left something there that they wasn't supposed to leave. And y'all read, read that story. What did they leave? They left one of his brothers by the name of Simeon. They left him over there in the land. Why? Because Joseph told him, listen, I'm going to let you go over and, and feed your family because I know that's my daddy. You don't know me, but I know my daddy. Oh, I'm going to close on that one right there. So he go feed the brother. But when the food runs out, they got to come back now. The long journey back. But here was the problem. When they go back, they left their brother. And their daddy said, I'm not letting you go back over there. Because now what Joseph's request was to send my, my brother. Oh, here's the text. Here's my, what you mean, his brother? His brother is Benjamin. He, he, Y'all ready for this here? Jacob, Israel, had four wives. Here we go. He had four wives. And of the four wives, they had 12 children. Y'all praying with me? But it took me all 12 of them. So if you get a child, I don't care if you got 15 of them. Take care of every one of them. So he had four wives with, with 12 children. Leah had six. Uh, Bilhah had two. Uh, uh, I think it's... Uh, forget her name. I'll get her name. Uh, but anyway, she had two. And then his, his favorite girl, Rachel, had two. That was his girl. Y'all know y'all be messing around. I'm going to preach here and I'm going to let y'all go. So y'all be messing with two of them, but one of them your favorite. <laughs> 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 Another text? Facts. That's a text. <laughs> That's why even though some folks be messing with God and the devil, at least God is your favorite. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully. <laughs> When you, you put some more time in the devil, it's, it got me confused sometimes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So he has these two, he has the two children by Leah, by Rachel, his favorite, mm -hmm. Benjamin and Joseph. Now he said, they left Simeon. Remember the text said Benjamin didn't go. Because Joseph is getting old now. I mean, Jacob is getting old now. And I'm not going to send my, my, my other son who, uh, who, who uh, I lost one son already. Now, I don't want to lose two. 
because that other one, that, that first son took, so, took such a toll out of me because he was my beloved son because of my old age. Uh, y'all read the text. He had Jake Joseph when he was an old man. See, y'all, y'all, y'all hear me? And when some of y'all, and, I, and I'm going to close on this note, and I, I might pick it up next week, we'll see. Some folks shouldn't <laughs> have no children when they're old. Oh, no. No, 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 no. When you're over 45, I know you want your little bookie, but, but, uh, but you might consider that. Because a lot of stuff happens when you have old children because your emotions and all of your feelings change. <laughs> and you mess stuff up. Have your babies when you're 25 so you can raise them babies your energy. Or tie yourself trying to have a baby at 53. Ah, <laughs> oh, y'all not praying hard enough. At least you're giving the tea. <laughs> so anyway, Joseph is in charge. He sends back, so they're on their way back. And Joseph playing the game with him. He played the game with him. And let me tell you something. I'm going to stop right here. I mean that. You lost your way from God. And you need to come back. But Satan playing the game with you. Mm, 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 mm. Because you've been going away too long. And I ain't talking about you. you, you your body is here. I get that. Mm. But your spirit and your mind is somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, I see it all the time. People come to church all the time. I know I've been listening to them. They, they don't be no more in that church than, than, than these wall painted blue. Mm-hmm. Because what? They lost their way. And what you mean you lost your way? Hopefully you, all, you had a relationship with God. You had a relationship. And, and, I, and I need to give you a point. Though. It, here's how you get, this is the reason why you come back when you lost your way. Most of the time you're forced back. The only reason why Jacob sent them boys back over there is because of their family. Mm-hmm. Some people will never come back to God until they lose stuff and they're forced to come back. Mm-hmm. Because of a family. Because of shortage in your life. You don't have enough food. <laughs> You don't have enough food. Now you can't, your, end, you, your ends don't meet. You done ran out of money before you ran out of money. And you're still trying to hold on. And, uh, and you know you need to come back to God. Because with God, when you were with God, you didn't have enough money. No, and the month ran out, but you still had a meal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some folk ain't going to come back because... Some people don't want to come back because they're going to come back because they're forced to. And some people are going to come back with the funeral. Mm-hmm. That's when they're going to come back. You know how many people come to God when somebody dies? Mm-hmm. Soon as a family member dies, God got your attention then. That was told Uzzah. Uh, 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 Isaiah, it was in the, in the year that King Uzzah died. That's when you saw me. Mm-hmm. Don't wait till somebody die before you see God. Make your way back to God. And don't just go back and forth, back and forth. Stay with God this time. What do you mean stay with him? Here's how you stay with him. Find something to do in the church. Find something to do. Be productive. Help out. I don't care if it's a small church. Help out any kind of way. That way it secures you so you won't be all wishy washy That's why a lot of people just all over the place because they ain't got nothing to do. Find something to do. Yeah, there was force back. That's why they went back that second time. And that was a long journey back, because I'm going to tell you something good. Can you imagine what's going through their mind, them boys? I got to go back over here. My dad is getting old. I left my other brother over there. My other brother died. I got to get my brother back over there, and I need food. What was going through their mind on their way back? And when you get to the, 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 the 45th chapter, Judah has a conversation with Joseph. And he said, if I don't get my brother back here, my daddy's going to die. My daddy's going to die. Because we broke his heart when we, when we basically set up the murder of our brother. We broke his heart. He's been grieving ever since. Now, if I don't bring Benjamin back, he'll never recover. He'll never recover. Are you lost? You lost your way. And you need to come back home to God. You used to sing in the choir. You went to Sunday school every week. You're trying to, you used to go to Bible study. Let us stand. But now you've lost your way. And you think about what, what I'm going to do. How, how can I get back? How can I get back? How can I get my joy back? How can I get my strength back? I talk to people all the time. I, I, I would look for Lisa. 
Lisa is not here. A young lady who I asked uh, to, uh, about coming to church on Wednesday, she swore I'd be here Sunday. I, she said, I'll be here Sunday. But see, I know something that Lisa don't know. When you think about coming back to church, or making your way back to God, that's when the devil really don't play fair. He'll start messing with you on Saturday night, on Sunday morning. He'll mess with you because he don't want you to get back to the place where you got your joy mm. and your strength. And it's going to be a long, a long walk back. That hour, you might be on the second pew. And it could take you 10 minutes to get from the second pew right to this front. Because Satan don't want you to come back. And what you got to do, you got to think in your mind. How do I figure all this stuff out? Don't try to figure that out. Just trust in God. Because once you do make it back, God receives you with open arms. He know what you did. He know that. He, God understands that. I know I got to go, but I'm just loving Genesis so much. The one thing I'm learning through God, Sister Christine, is that once God put his favor on you, he understands you still going to mess up. But his favor is on you. Abraham said, Sarah, tell him, you're not my wife, you're my sister. And I was saying, Abraham, I don't know what you got, what kind of power you got like that. You can tell that woman, say I'm your sister. Because I know I won't, I won't try that with Tracy. We're going to Atlanta. Say, Tracy, we're going to Atlanta. You ain't my wife, you my sister. You don't know she don't mind. <laughs> Abraham must have been balling. <laughs> Is that you? Is that you? Do you want to come back home? Have you lost your way? Seriously, are you worried about the crowd? Maybe you're not hungry enough. Maybe you need to, maybe, uh, maybe a family need to hit your life. Maybe you got too much stuff right now. That's the one problem. Some of us got so much stuff, we don't need God now. Be careful now. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. And if your soul not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. <laughs>